Come with me as we explore the beauty of the Alsace region at Christmas time and show you how you can see a whole lot in one day. In my last video, I shared with you about the Christmas markets in Strasbourg. Now we explore more of the Alsace region from the castles and markets to places that inspire Disney's Beauty and the Beast and more. My name is Sarah and I'm a solo traveler showcasing the best travel tips, places to visit, and foodie experiences around the world. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an adventure. That's the 8 a.m. bell. I'm up early and I'm going to meet a day tour where we're gonna go see a few different areas of the Alsace region. I'm just walking two kilometers to get to the beginning of the tour. Hopefully see the teddy bear house, which is something that everybody tells me is awesome. So heading there now. Already, so I just went near the famous like bear house that everybody comes to and oh my god this square is so cute yeah basically it's near La Gruber so if you want to take pictures of the bear house that's it but oh my god look at this cute fountain and at night this must be all lit up so cute and all the buildings are just like amazing oh my god Okay, now just running to go grab coffee and pastry or something before heading to check out some more of the Alsace region. But I'm hungry, so I wanna make sure I get something at least for the bus before we leave. I think we're almost there. I'm going to a place called Oh My Goodness, which has good reviews for being a good cafe. So while we don't have long to spend there, I just wanted to pop in and check it out. Grabbing a coffee to go, I headed to the bakery. And I went to the Aujourd'hui Bakery to get a pen au chocolat. But now it's time to go find the uh, tour. Hopefully I'm not missing it, but I had to get something to eat first. Oh, stressful. Alrighty guys, so I signed up with a Get Your Guide tour and with Tour Alsace. I happen to be the only English speaker on it. They have audio guides, I guess, so it takes you everywhere, but it makes it easy to just get around in a small like 360. Um, basically, you can see all around the windows are huge. Water guys, first croissant of the trip. It is so good. I got it from, oh my good, uh, I got it from Aujourd'hui Bakery. Mm -hmm. mm. So good. The tour commenced in Strasbourg and will go through Haute Konigsberg, drive through Bergheim, Riveauville, and stop in Riekeveer, Kaiserberg, and Colmar. So be sure to stick around to the end to see all the amazing sights. It was as if we drove through the clouds as we climbed up one of the tallest hills in the area where Konigsberg Chateau was perched. We were greeted with a mix of snow and rain. Guys, we're here at Hort Konigsberg Chateau and it is so cool. It's like this medieval fortress and basically you walk up this stairway that has basically, it's pretty steep to get up to the tower. And there's so many different ways they would stop people from trying to attack. And you can see it in a few things. Let me show you. The first is when they're walking up the stairs, you can see they have these areas where People would shoot bow and arrows at people probably running up if they got past the gate that would shut down here. And not only that, there was another iron gate that they could close. And then there was a draw bridge. This is nuts. It would either come up and if they got on here somehow and that door would close, they would drop hot oil from up here down on the soldiers trying to crack in through the break through the castle which is pretty epic but yeah let's continue up the tower this is pretty cool and cold actually uh but yeah i did not expect the snow today chateau konigsberg is located in the Vosgos mountains and it was abandoned after the 30 years war but was rebuilt by german kaiser wilhelm ii from 1900 through 1908 all about how it was rebuilt as well as the history of the chateau in the museum and see the medieval rooms decorated especially during Christmas. Alrighty guys so we're in the forest room of the castle and it's really cool because surrounding us it was decorated basically to look like a forest and you see the antlers for hunting so the lord of the house would go and train 
by basically hunting wild boars, other animals like deer, and they painted these modus on the walls here, which is pretty cool. And they made this room a little bit festive too with the tree behind me and get a giant historic oven as well. But check these paintings out. You can see here's an arrow. Uh, Lord with his sword in here. What other animals can we find here? But yeah, it's definitely a really unique room. Wander through medieval rooms and see what life was like in the medieval ages, as well as learn about King Wilhelm II's use of the chateau. This was the banquet room that the tier signs would use, and the weapons weren't normally here. It says they were placed here, but they're all from the 15th to 17th century. So this was the great dining hall, and sometimes the Emperor William II would come here and have lunch. He never celebrated Christmas here, as it said, but he did come here quite a bit because until 1918, this was in the hands of the Germans until the Treaty of Versailles gave it back to, uh, or gave it to France after the Germans lost the war. But definitely really cool place. Oh. Watch your head, things are short in here. And what was this room? This is really pretty. There's so much nice woodwork mixed with stone. Hey, I was hoping you would stay, but I've always known you would go far. So that castle was epic. There was definitely more that I need to see, but we only got an hour stop here, but we that's all right because we're gonna be seeing a lot of different things today, but yes, this castle is definitely one of a kind. So definitely recommend this 10 out of 10. This castle is massive though. I wish I could spend like two hours here at least, but an hour is enough for you to walk through, but if you're taking a bunch of photos and videos, maybe a little longer. But for now, off to the next stop. Next, we hit the road and hit the Alsace wine route, which is a series of vineyards as well as villages that we pass through like Ripoville, Bergheim. You'd probably need a few days if you were gonna stop at the vineyards along the wine route. This was the perfect tour to take a day to see a few of the cute towns in the area as well as learn about the history. Our next stop, we stayed for two hours, and it was Rikavir, and this was one I'd been waiting for since it inspired Beauty and the Beast, as well as was one of the most beautiful towns in Alsace. While this wasn't a Christmas market tour, the Christmas market was going on, and there was no avoiding it and no way you'd want to skip it. Some opted for a sit-down meal. I opted to explore the market in town and go down the different alleyways. All right, guys, we are here in Rikavir, and this is one of the main towns that is on the wine route in Alsace. But there's so much more things to do here other than drink, although I know that is really popular here to do. But this is actually the town that one of the towns in Rikavir and Ribeville are the two towns that inspired Beauty and the Beast, where Belle grew up in the town. And this kind of reminds me of when Gaston was around the fountain or the fountain at Disney World. Uh, that you can go see at Magic Kingdom, but this is definitely a really, really beautiful place, especially magical during the Christmas market time, which is you can see is right behind me. And yeah, I'm just gonna roam around the streets. The cobblestone streets here are just so beautiful. And yeah, these are old, like you'll see half timbered houses here. And these are where the winemakers would live and have their shops. And today you still can go do tastings as well but I won't be partaking in that today, but that is here if that is something that you are wanting to do when you're in the region of Alsace. But there are so many other things to eat food here, and yeah, I'm gonna just go around, check the market stalls. I did get a kind of fun surprise. I wanted a gingerbread man, and I got one. And the guy actually gave me two. He was so nice. As I walked in, he just handed me a free piece of this like chocolate-covered gingerbread. Yeah, and then I bought one and he gave me two. So nice, the people here. And the Christmas spirit is at an all time high. But let's go and check out more of Rika. Guys, so when you go down the side streets, you're gonna find just as many beautiful 
things like this shop decorated outside with the bears. This is so cool. And that's why everybody's taking photos. Let's go check out the shop. Hey, the shops in Revere are set up for the Christmas time. They sell angels, other ornaments, and Christmas decorations. This is one of the oldest houses or buildings in Riviera. It's so that's 1639, which is pretty darn old. Oh wow, this is a very picturesque. Around every corner, the streets just get prettier and prettier. Okay, so they have actual speakers that are blowing up Christmas music throughout the town, so I might get copyrighted, but that's why I meant to probably do some voiceovers. Next, I headed out to search for some local food. So this is foie gras, I can't foie gras. <laughs> and it has pork with, what was it, duck? Yeah, no, it's this pork, this pork. pork. Yeah. With, what is foie gras? It, it, it's goose. It's it goose? goose? Okay. Yeah. First time for everything. Oh, not bad. It's good. Mm -hmm. So they have crepes, it looks like, sausage and fries and beer as well. Let's go outside. They definitely have some interesting things in that market, but this is so beautiful. So much fun. A snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands to keep each other warm while we stand and watch a choir perform and all the Christmas songs that we love. Great, so one tip I'm gonna give you is if you're coming to Rickavere during the Christmas markets, definitely try to get here super early because around this time, which is like almost two, it is packed. Some of the side streets get quieter and you can find cute alleys if you want like a photo with nobody in it. But when you're on the main drag here, you're gonna see there are tons of people here. And yeah, but this is really beautiful. Like there's fountains everywhere. It's just magical. Now I'm gonna go find something quick to eat in the Christmas market probably. Cause I didn't want to do a full sit down meal. This is kind of funny because I can't find anywhere to sit but I wanna show you what I'm eating. I got quale companiarda, these like pomme de terre, so potatoes sausage, onions. There's also one that they have Munster cheese. Mm. It's pretty good. That's the one thing I wish this market had was more tables because there's nowhere to eat really. Or you could sit on the ground but you might get dirty. Mm -hmm. But this is good, warm and filling and it was eight euros. So I'm glad I got to try it. Okay, I couldn't help myself but I got the juice de pomme. And they charge two euros uh, for the cup, but then you get it back when you return the cup. And of course, we got some food. So now it's time to leave Rickavere's Christmas market. I had some food, went around, looked at some beautiful buildings and alleyways. Now it's time to head back to the parking lot to go to our next stop. Finally, we hit the road, driving through some more vineyards and cool towns before getting to Kaiserberg. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. So right now we're in Kaiserberg, which is another beautiful medieval town in Alsace, and this is just so cool. Check this out! There's more of these half-timbered homes. Oh, wow. Alright guys, we're here at another town that has these half-timbered uh, houses here. And this is right between Rickavere and Colmar. And it is so cute and much quieter, which I really love, honestly. This is so cute. And uh, one of the main things to see here is the church, Chen Kwa. So I'm just heading to that. We don't have long here, basically like 30 minutes. But yeah, I'm excited to share with you some more of this region. It's so cool. It's very quiet though. I'm wondering where everybody is. Let's go check inside this church out. 
Sorry guys, I just went into the church in Croix, Croix? <laughs> the church in Croix. And it is from the 13th and 15th century. And the oldest part of it being the facade of the church here. And when you go inside, you can see a 16th century, really ornate altar piece by Jean Bougard. At Bongard. And yeah, it's really nice in there. And there's just a very impressive, like, Jesus that's hanging over right as you're walking down the main nave. But yeah, this is another really beautiful, cute town here in the Alsace region. And I'm gonna go find something warm to drink because I'm getting cold, but. Welcome to Kaiserberg. This place is so, like, just stunning. And also a little less busy than when we were at Rikivir, but definitely just as pretty. Look at the tree! This is just stunning. This is pretty gnarly. They have basically a river running through the city underneath all these buildings. That's nuts. You guys, this is just so cute. This alleyway and the decorations everywhere. They're just so amazing. Finally, we left to the last stop of the tour in Colmar, France. All right, now we're in Colmar, and this is a part of the Best of Alsace uh, region tour that I booked through Get Your Guide, and it is so beautiful. So we get to explore the Christmas markets with this tour as well, even though it's not. Um, it wasn't basically advertised as a Christmas market tour, but literally. There were two Christmas markets that we could go to as we had free time in the different areas. But now we have two hours in Colmar. I'm actually gonna be coming back here to really go more in depth and visiting Colmar. I'm excited to show you guys that as well. Alrighty guys, this is so pretty. All the lights just turned on and this is definitely worth the tour, especially during the winter, because then you'll be able to experience a few Christmas markets and get back in time for the Schauser one as well. I am glad that I'm gonna stay two nights, so that's why I'm not more rushed seeing things in Colmar, because I will be coming back here and staying for a little bit. So I'll be able to relax and leisurely explore Colmar and bring you along with me. But for now, let's just walk around and enjoy the lights. We have the Hotel de Ville, which is like the center of government here. And this was built between 1778 and 1782. The likes of Napoleon Bonaparte have been here, and a lot of the presidents to visit have been here of France, so that's pretty cool as well. And it looks pretty during the Christmas holidays. This seems to be the main street for shopping. I was just on the Rue de Clef, and now I'm going on the Rue Saint Nicholas, which goes towards the cathedral. I saw the steeple, so it was like, let's head towards that. Okay, the light displays here are just fantastic. Right now, we're in Colmar, and one of the things they're known for is all the canals. They call it Little Venice, and this is also where one of the Christmas markets are. So you can check it out while you're here, and they're so cute. I did try and that you need to try when you come to the Christmas markets here in Colmar in the region is their gingerbread. It says like 10 de spice and it's so good and they have like different flavors. They have orange, chocolate, or the plain and I just tried the chocolate and it was so good. I'm definitely going to buy some before I leave this region because I bought a gingerbread cookie. I haven't even taken a bite of it. I've even taken photos of it because it's so cute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, there's so many stalls. But they've spread it out because I think they used to be in one area and then it became too much. They didn't handle. The thing I'm noticing is that there's a lot more handicrafts at these markets that I'm finding, like woodworking and like very like unique um, type of things. Like I was drinking, eating, I was eating foie gras uh, earlier at one of the other markets today. And yeah, I'm trying to just try new things even. And one thing I do like is they allow you to sample things, at least while I've been in France, which has been super nice. So I've been able to have some experiences. I don't know what I think about photo though. 
Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And I'm about to wrap up this day trip vlog. We're gonna head out to back to Strasbourg tonight. I wasn't in a rush exploring here since I knew I would be coming back to Colmar after Strasbourg. Now I still made it to two markets. So there are two markets here, Place de Ancien and Duan, and then the coffee house indoor market. So let's go and check out these uh, arts and crafts leathers inside. ended up getting this suit before we leave because I need something to hold me over. I definitely want to try flambe while I'm in Strasbourg. So I got this and it said soup de, I don't even know what it said. Oh, soup de pot iron. And I Googled it and it means pumpkin soup. So I'm having pumpkin soup, which this is the first time I've seen pumpkin soup at a market or people having it on YouTube. I never saw anybody, but this is super nice to be able to eat this, walk around, stay warm and enjoy the market and the lights. Look how amazing this is. Well, it ended around 7 p.m. and I headed to Le Meteor for some flambe. It's supposed to be one of the best in town. All right guys, I got this, um, what is it called, flambe and it, the gratiné and it has little pieces of, I think, bacon and the cheese is so good on it. Mm. Really, really good. This was huge impact, but after I finished eating, I went back to sleep early because the next day I was gonna wake up early to explore some more Strasbourg before heading to Colmar. Yeah, this is Grand Rue, which has a lot of different shops, and yeah, every shop really gets into it in terms of decorating. But I need a warm drink and something to eat before we So we're right here in the last PA 116 or 116 and it is super busy. So they actually have two prices. You can get your stuff for here or takeaway. And as you can see, this is the line. And I talked to one guy from Paris and he said he comes here because it's the real like boulangerie. But now I'm gonna go actually, because a lot of the boulangeries have these like coffee machines, but they're really like not good. So I found a coffee nearby, Origins, that I wanna go check out because it looks super busy and cute. Jin is a vegan cafe and most of their baked goods you would never know have no milk or dairy products. Grabbing a bite, it was time to hit the road to see three more sites before leaving Strasbourg. It is super busy yet again in the Strasbourg Christmas market, but there's so many cute shops here. Like these little nutcrackers. I'm going to find one of the most tourist spots. We're in it pretty much right now. That was that giant line. There was like a huge line at the Christmas market right in Petit France. And I was wondering what was going on. And it's this uh, maker of ornaments, glass ornaments, Meisenthal. And they only have a hundred per day. So people line up each day during the Christmas markets here just at, for a chance to buy one of them. And they make different ones each year. So it becomes kind of a collector's piece. And they seem to be about 19 euros, not too bad, but I know myself and I probably will break one of those if I try to pack it away in my bag. And plus I'm never home anyways. Oh, but look at these swans, so cute. As you see behind me, there's a few towers and that's Pont Couvel de Strasbourg. And there's this covered bridge that's pretty famous here. And supposedly you can get a good view and from one of the towers, but oh my gosh, it is probably the coolest day that I've had while in Strasbourg. But all right guys, this is the Maison des Pont Couvert. It is so beautiful and it's probably because it's right next to the Pont Couvert on this side, which is a covered historic bridge here. You can actually walk on the roof of it. I see people doing it now. I'm just beyond freezing though. I'm debating to walk on that side or not. All right, I think I'll do it. But yeah, this is just so cool that they still have such oh, oh, these beautiful canals and these bridges with these towers. I wish I could climb up them. I don't know, maybe this one's open. I see a guy standing over here. We shall see. 
Alrighty guys, we're on top of the covered bridge. You can walk across it to both sides of the river and it's also a dam. This was built in the 1700s, which is crazy because it's still serving its purpose and also just a lovely way of being able to get from one side of the river to the other. But now it's time to go find another hot drink because I'm freezing my butt off. I'm under a sign that says Strasbourg, the capital of Christmas. And this is Rue de Marche au Poisson. So it used to be where the fish markets were, and now it's mainly where there's shops, and as well as like restaurants you can go eat. Uh, but it is definitely a very picturesque street as well. And I'm going to just take a little walk on it. There's also the Alsatian, Alsatian Museum, which is behind me a bit and costs seven euro 50 cents and gives you a rundown of the history of the area and, that we're in right now, which I heard from actual a Parisian that it's very nice. He likes it. So let's go check it out probably after, but it opens at 2 p.m. Oh my gosh, <laughs> those birds scared me. But yeah, there's like a lot of different bars and restaurants here. There's an Irish bar, the Dubliner. And one thing to know is if you're looking to save money, lunch is the best time to eat out here. It is like they have the plate, they have these set menus where you can get an entree, a dessert, and a starter at some places for like 20 euros. I saw one I passed by called La Hush, and there are others as well. Oh my god! Literally around every corner, the city just surprises me. Look at this square. For my train, I wanted to head to the Alsacian Museum and it was beautiful and all decorated for the holidays as well. Welcome to the Museum Alsace. This is one of a few museums that you can get with the Museum Pass, which can last a day or 16 euros, or there's a three day pass as well. I only had time to come to one museum. Some museums are actually closed right now. So I just got this one and it cost me seven euros, 50 cents, three euros, 50 cents if you're a student. But yeah, this is really cool. And it's almost in a historic building itself. Uh, so let's learn more about the people and the place. So it's definitely really cool to learn more about Alsace's region and what a home will look like in the early days in medieval towns and also learning about the different traditions, like how they would not have had traditionally nice wood like mahogany and that because it was super expensive. So they would paint their furniture and trunks this dark colored wood color and they would even like have their names engraved on it and sometimes the date of their weddings on it as well. And they also were really good pottery makers, ceramic makers. And here you can see some of the original uh, Alsace, like region ceramics, what their kitchens look like. And it's definitely great to learn more and not just look at the pretty photos you can take during Christmas time, but learn more about the history and the people here as well. And the museum right now has a thing going on where you can actually see and learn about the different Christmas traditions, many that we have taken with us around the world from this region itself. We're learning more about what a home as well as what people would wear in Alsace. It was time to head on back to the hotel to grab my stuff to head to the train station. So this is just one last walk going to look to see one beautiful most photographed building here. Um, it's a school but it looks super beautiful and you can see it from the water and it's on the way back to walking back to where I'm staying to grab my stuff so I thought why not and look at how beautiful this is. I'm just so happy I made it here. I hope to come back actually and visit during the warmer months as well because there's still so much to see, so many museums, and just it's a wonderful place, honestly. It's magical. But all right, I'm gonna put my hands back in my pocket because they're freezing. And then we'll head back and get to the train station for 421. I have like an hour. Uh, just honestly, the this city is so awesome. It's the ninth largest Strasbourg in all of France. It's super walkable and just stunning as you walk 
along the canals here and just see things like the International School de Pontaniers makes me never want to leave. And the food is really good here. There's a bunch of Michelin star restaurants or recommended ones as well. And while this trip was mainly focused on the Christmas markets as well as some of the other things you can do, especially during the colder months, I highly suggest that you come here another time. And I am going to take that suggestion myself because there's just so much to see here and it's beautiful and I can only imagine it in the summer sun. And now to head back and get some warmth before heading to the train station and going to Colmar. But yeah, I'll sign off here because this is the most beautiful spot to say goodbye. And if you've enjoyed this, please hit subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And if you have any questions, let me know them in the comments. As always, you can see some more recent adventures on my Instagram, so be sure to follow me over there and on TikTok. But oh my, this is just a stunning place and one that I will always remember. I love this. <laughs> All right, bye. Here you have a day or a few. I hope this helps you plan Christmas in Alsace as well as other things to do in Shroudsburg. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and as always hit the like button if this has helped you and subscribe so you don't miss the next adventure.